The fourth bridge crosses the Firth of Forth just north of Edinburgh in Scotland and when Network Rail got in touch to say, Jeff, would you like to climb up it and perhaps walk across it? That's the kind of opportunity that you don't say no to. Arguably the most famous railway bridge in Britain, the iconic fourth bridge was opened in 1890 after seven years of construction. On the walk down to the bridge from the station, there's a memorial garden and a plaque dedicated to the men known to have died during its construction. And then to meet my host for the day, who are taking me to three places. One, to the top, where there's a viewing platform where you can look all around. Then down to the level where the trains cross and you can get up close to the rolling stock. And then to the bothy level. That's a point and a place where workers can get warm and rest and make that all-important cup of tea. The bridge is just under two and a half kilometers in length and weighs 52,000 tons. Six and a half million rivets were used in its construction, including a final golden rivet that was driven in by the then Prince of Wales, later King Edward VII. On average, around 200 trains now cross over it every day, which works out to around three million passengers per year. I'll be getting onto the bridge today, not by train, but by using the dedicated lift that's in place for maintenance workers. It's at an angle, which is slightly disconcerting. How long does it take? A minute and a half? 90 seconds? 90 seconds. And it's not a lift, it's a, a hoist. People are good hoist. And being hoisted up. All right, stepping out. Onto the blue, is it called, are we calling it scaffold? Wow. <laughs> Look at that. What's great is that it's not as windy. Uh, in fact, I can't feel any wind at all. They were saying we had a safety brief beforehand. Some days it can get very windy. There's not a lot of wind. I just want to acknowledge that over there uh, is the fourth road bridge. This is the fourth bridge. Sometimes they call it the fourth rail bridge to distinguish it, but this is the fourth bridge. Over there is the road bridge and then the newer Queen's Ferry Bridge as well. So you've got three bridges across the Firth here. Uh, the views are spectacular. Now there is a gap in the floor. It reminds me like when you go on, you go at the seaside, you're up here, like you're on Brighton Pier and you walk out and the planks are wood and there's a little gap here. If they warned us, if you dropped your phone, uh, the phone could slip through the gap. Yeah, so I'm with the network rail team and there's uh, the contractors, uh, Balfour Pitty are also here. They're sort of permanently here on site uh, all year round and we're on top of the viewing platform. So we're on the northernmost cantilever. I've just come down to get a view off this cantilever onto the middle one. I keep saying the word cantilever, so I should probably explain with the fourth bridge the way that cantilever works. The bottom part of each cantilever is anchored into the ground, whilst the upper end of the cantilever supports the bridge itself. So one side is anchored down, leaving the other one free, and it's this that holds the weight of the bridge. There's this famous picture where fourth bridge engineer Benjamin Baker had three people sit with two chairs, two piles of bricks, and broomsticks to show how it worked. With their outstretched arms, the people on the left and the right serve to transfer the load of the suspended person in the middle to the anchors on either side. Now you may have heard of the famous phrase, a fourth bridge job, referring to a task that is endless because the fourth bridge always had to continually be repainted. But that's no longer the case. This is the great thing about the fourth bridge, isn't it? It sort of fell into common parlance. A lot of people refer to a fourth bridge job yeah. as meaning a never-ending job. Yeah. But a few years ago, we had, you actually finished painting the fourth bridge. Is that right? So, well, <laughs> we, we didn't completely finish. We okay. did a fairly big refurbishment. In the mid-90s, British Rail started off. Rail track came in, Network Rail came on. And from early 2000s to um, about 2011-12, there was a, a significant refurbishment job. But that was mainly to the three big cantilevers okay. that we see on the, on, on the bridge today. Fully encapsulated, a huge environmental issues. The, 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 all the steel work that you see was blasted right back down to its original bare metal and built back up to the paint, sort of the paint coating that you see today. So the bridge had to be completely covered so that there was no debris or, or anything going into the water, but also a lot of controls put in place for the health and well-being of the staff that were doing that because a lot of, obviously, old lead-based paint systems, a lot of toxins and everything in there as well. Yes, for 10 years, between 2001 and 2011, the bridge was repainted by a 200-strong workforce who applied a triple layer of a new glass 
glass flake epoxy paint, which created a chemical bond that provides an impenetrable layer to the weather. You guys are from yeah. Network Rail, so you you do the tracks and the signals, but there's a dedicated team on site from the contractors Belfort Beatty. They're here all year round, but there's also the, the, the team, is it Amy, that actually they're the ones that put the harnesses on? A Amy are the bridge inspectors, so they all come out. Every six years they'll do detailed abseil, touch what we call a touch and distance survey. They'll, they'll give us really detailed photographs and inspection the structure. Within those six uh, other six years, they'll be doing a visual inspection and things, but it's all obviously with the size of the bridge, it's all staged so that they're kind of rolling on it pretty much continuously. Let's go visit the other levels, and good timing because the weather is turning. Yeah, the wind is uh, is picking up. They told us we had to have helmets that had chin straps in case the helmet goes flying off. The wind, yeah, the wind's picking up. We're leaving at just the right time. So we head down in the hoist again to the track level. Good place to do some train spotting. Oh, hang on. we're in luck. There's one. There's one coming right now. I thought we might have to wait five minutes, but it's coming now. <laughs> And then down a few more metres to the most surprising feature of the fourth bridge. There's a bothy, a place where workers can take shelter. The, the bothy was actually put in about 1930. So it really it's there for anybody that's working on the bridge um, for it to use. And um, some of the, the cold temperatures and that that you get here, yeah. uh, you really need a place like this to come <laughs> into and, and get a bit of heat and get a hot drink and, and, and all the rest of it. And this, this is the actual welfare area that we're in and uh, across the way from us. Um, there's a small office and a... Oh, there's there's, and, an, there's and, another bit? There's another bit. There's a small office okay. and, a, and a toilet. Uh, and the idea is, is that uh, obviously when, the, when the, the workers not come onto the bridge, um, it's more cost efficient to have them on the bridge, okay. have the facilities here, the, you know, the amount of lost time you potentially would have without these facilities, with, with people going off the bridge, going down the hoys, using the facilities, coming back up, it's just uh, more economical to keep the guys on the bridge. And I'm happy to report that we boiled the kettle or had a quick cuppa before pushing on. So at Bothy level, Both is just over there. There's then this path here which carries on to the next section. We're not being allowed to walk down that today, but it's cool knowing that it's right there. And a second ago, a train rumbled literally about two meters above our head. Wait, you're saying I can walk down there, but I'll just have to come back again. It would be rude not to go out. Okay, I should go out and take a picture, shouldn't I? Watch your head. Watch my head. Don't drop my phone into the Firth or the, yeah. There's only one thing more, you know. <laughs> and having been absolutely fine until now, it was at this point that suddenly I had a bit of a wobble with the height. Okay. You, have you done this when it's been windy and raining, like proper yeah. proper weather? Yeah. This is a calm day, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was, um, we've got to walk back and it's proper like, it's proper don't look down. I just look down, don't look down. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna, is everybody else all fine? I'm finding it a little bit weird, okay. Everyone else is fine. I'm just, I'm just going to compose myself for a second. Oh my goodness! <laughs> compose myself, that is, with trains rumbling directly overhead. Which one was it? Lovely. That's a hell of a rumble, right? Yep. You see. So the nettles are right above our heads? Yep. That's crazy. Do you feel it? Yeah. <laughs> so slowly back along the gangway to the hoist to take me to ground level, and because the work of painting it has now been completed, something that I realised I brought wasn't going to be required. But what I've also done is that I've brought my own paintbrush. <laughs> so I brought a paintbrush for nothing. Oh, okay. That was amazing. <laughs> Did you have fun? I did. You've done it before. You've done it before. Oh, that was amazing. Slightly, slightly nerve-wracking, but also, also amazing. <laughs> and that's what it's like to go up the fourth bridge. My thanks to Network Rail for inviting me and to everyone that I spoke to and met today. I will put links in the description to more background info if you want to read more about this incredible railway bridge.